goodness. Hello, hello, sorry about that. I was in the other room sending a quick email and realized, oh no, I have to come back over here. I bet my timer stopped. So here we are, we're talking about test anxiety in nursing school today. So before I dive into it, let's do a quick tech check. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, okay? And let me know. And I'm just pulling up my notes and we are ready to get rolling. Okay, I'm still waiting for confirmation that you guys can hear me. So let me have one more sip of coffee. All right, we are good. We are good to go. Thank you very much for doing that. Okay, so test anxiety in nursing school is a pretty big problem. I was just chatting with someone on, I think it was Facebook, Facebook or Instagram, I forget. And they said they had been an LPN for 50 years. And the reason that they did not progress, like they didn't go on to get their RN, which was their dream, was because they had so much fear about failing out of school because of test anxiety. And that is not okay. Um, I would hate for that to happen to anyone. I would hate for that to happen to you. So we're going to talk about test anxiety. And I just want you to know that if you have test anxiety, it's okay. It's going to be okay. The first thing I want you to do is to stop beating yourself up about it. Stop feeling like a failure. Stop feeling like this is going to be the huge barrier between you and your dream because we're going to talk through some strategies so that you can manage it better. I'm not saying it's going to go away completely, but we can hopefully manage it a little bit better. So the first thing I think that's important to understand is that there's some really good reasons why you might have test anxiety in nursing school. So it's completely justified. If you didn't have some test anxiety, I'd actually be a little bit surprised. There are really high stakes exams. There is a crazy grading scale. There are timed exams with a little clock in the corner. There's skills-based exams where you're doing something with your hands, doing some kind of skill and getting checked off on that by a very scrutinizing individual. And there's proctored online exams. There's just all kinds of ways that you're evaluated in nursing school as far as it comes to testing. So what I would say about test anxiety first is that too much, so too much test anxiety, is really going to interfere with your brain's processing ability. It's gonna take up your brain's um, processing capacity. It's like when you have, and I'm so guilty of this, on your computer and you have a million windows open, what does that do to your computer? It slows things down. It doesn't operate as effectively, right? That's what's going on in your brain when you have test anxiety. It's gonna slow down your brain's ability to process, to recall information, and to perform in that testing environment. But zero test anxiety, that's not good either. A little bit, a little bit of anxiety can actually be helpful. It's going to put you into that hyper aware state, that hyper vigilant state where you're extra careful, extra aware of what is going on. That's perfect. No anxiety, probably not the best. So test anxiety can happen to absolutely anyone. It can happen at any time, even if you've never had it before. And I read a study that was conducted uh, a while back, 2009, I think it probably still applies today, that showed that nursing students experience test anxiety at higher rates than other majors. And there's that's just mind blowing to me, but it kind of makes sense. There's a lot of reasons why this happens. So the grading scale, let's talk about the grading scale. In nursing school, if you haven't started yet, get used to really weird grading scales. So a very common grading scale would be 93 to 100 being an A, and then like 85 to 92 being a B, and then a C being something like 77 to 84. That's a very common grading scale. Pop in the chat if yours is similar or different. I'm really curious about this. And then guess what? There's no D. There's nothing below a 77%. If you scored a 75%, that's failing. So the grading scale is really, really intense. So imagine 
you're walking into an exam knowing that if you don't get at least a 77%, for example, then you have failed the exam. So that's one reason why there's so much test anxiety because the grading scale is so strict. Okay, another one is a nor uh, there's a, a new format for testing. Nursing students, you know, starting out maybe aren't used to taking exams in this way with the NCLEX style questions and all of that. And this goes beyond showing what you've learned by answering knowledge-based questions. Now you have to take and show what you've learned by applying your knowledge to critical thinking scenarios, clinical situations, all your test exam questions are basically going to be, you've got a patient in this situation, what are you gonna do about it? So it's not just answering knowledge-based questions. And thank you, Anne. Anne says that her grading scale is under 75 is a fail. Yeah, that's, that's a rough grading scale, absolutely. So when you're doing this new format of questions, you have to be able to go several layers deep, okay? It's not gonna ask you a question, and I use this example all the time, it's not gonna ask you the question and say, does the drug furosemide cause hypokalemia or hyperkalemia? It's not gonna ask you that. You might've been asked that in anatomy and physiology, right? A question like that, a question where it's just knowledge. But in nursing school, it's gonna be a scenario. It's gonna say something like, your patient Bob is on a continuous furosemide infusion. Which of these things is the most appropriate action for you to take? And then it's gonna give you some options. Are you going to tell Bob to stay away from avocados because maybe they've got some potassium in them? Are you going to check his hemoglobin on a regular basis? You'd have to know a few things about furosemide in order to know that that's not the right answer, right? Um, furosemide has nothing to do with your hemoglobin. And then another option might be anticipate giving Bob an antihypertensive throughout the day. Well, in order to know that's not the right answer, you have to know what furosemide does, that it causes volume losses, and that he's actually more at risk for hypotension. And then another option might be place Bob on the cardiac monitor for continuous monitoring. And you would have to know that that's the right answer by knowing that furosemide is a diuretic, it acts on the loop of Henle, it's gonna cause massive potassium losses or significant potassium losses Potassium is important for cardiac electrophysiology, and when a patient has low potassium levels, they're at risk for cardiac dysrhythmias. So I just went five layers deep on that question. So it's not gonna be so straightforward. It's gonna make you think through several layers. I think of nursing school exam questions like onions. You just gotta peel the layers off of the onion. And that can make students have some test anxiety because they're not used to answering these types of questions. So to get a little bit past that, that component of your test anxiety, I would just say start early, practice often doing NCLEX style exam questions and really getting used to thinking through things in that way. Okay, another reason why nursing students have higher than normal test anxiety than other majors are exit exams. So every semester, if your school operates the same way mine did, and I think a lot of them do, you could have an exit exam every semester and then a big one at the end. So what I mean by exit exams is it's your exit out of the current semester and at the end, it's your exit out of the program. You have to pass this test in order to move forward. So at the end of every semester, we had an ATI exit exam that covered the core content from that semester. So first semester was like med surge stuff. And then, you know, when we had PEDS and OB, we had to take PEDS and OB exit exams. When we had mental health, we had to take a mental health one. We had, we had leadership, we had to take an exit exam in leadership. And at the very end, before we could get the green light to go take our NCLEX, we had to pass a big comprehensive exit exam. So those are really, really high stakes exams. And in most programs, you get a couple, maybe three attempts and if you don't pass at a certain level, then buy. And so that's a lot of pressure. So that's another reason why students may have test anxiety. So if you are going to a school that utilizes exit exams, they're, they're going to probably not write their own. They're probably gonna use a standardized exam like ATI or HESI. So I would recommend using the materials from those 
resources. Use the ATI resources to study for your ATI exit exam. I'm shocked by how many students ask, what do I study for this ATI exam? Study the ATI materials, okay? For HESI exams, I believe Evolve, which is the publisher of that exam, has materials for that as well, okay? And there was something else I was gonna say about these exit exams. Oh, why they're used. You might be wondering why they are used. They are not there as a barrier to keep you from pursuing your dream. They are there to prepare you and predict your ability to pass the NCLEX. So your school 100% wants you to pass the NCLEX. They're ranked and, and evaluated on their NCLEX pass rate. So if their students don't pass the NCLEX, that school could risk losing accreditation. So they really want you to pass this exam. So every semester, they're making sure, okay, this student could pass NCLEX content on this subject, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you get to the very end, that's your big predictor exam. Okay, so that's why they're used. All right, the other reason why a nursing major might have more test anxiety than somebody maybe studying, I don't know, interior design or whatever, I don't even know, um, is information overload. It's just a lot. It's just a lot of information. And it's easy to look at your, your med search textbook. Mine was... It was like that thick, it was humongous. I called it Big Red, because it was red and it was big, Big Red. Um, you'll probably look at a book like that and, and realize you're gonna have one like that every semester and think, hmm, how am I gonna learn all this, right? It's a lot of information. So what I would say to this is, one thing is just be very careful that you're not overstudying. Students often overstudy and just keep um, going over the same material over and over again and not, either not, putting it into long-term memory, or just reviewing material they already know. So if you're going along and you're studying and you're not having these like light bulb moments or aha moments as I call them, then your brain's not lighting up for some reason. Either you're not engaged with what you're studying. So studying right now or studying in this way is not beneficial. You're not firing neurons, right? You're not making new pathways, you're not connecting. The other reason you might not be having aha moments as you're studying is you're reviewing information you already know, right? So pay attention to that as you're studying. If you're not firing neurons, it's either because you're not engaged, because this method of studying doesn't work for you, or you're reviewing things that you already know, which is why in C Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, I show you a way to study and refine your and I don't know if refine is the right word, but narrow down what you're studying so that you don't overstudy, so that you're always reviewing the information that you still need to review, okay? So I'll put a link below this video to Bootcamp. It's on sale right now. I would love for you to check it out. Okay, so that is another reason, information overload. And then another reason is that you associate your grades with your personal worth. Um, a lot of nursing students are really competitive and really identify as high performing students. You have to be to get to this point, right? So if you don't do well on an exam, this is going to challenge that core belief that you have about yourself. And that's really uncomfortable. That's a really uncomfortable place to be. So every test of any kind becomes this high stakes assessment because not only is it assessing you on whatever topic you're being tested about, it is also reinforce, reinforcing your sense of identity and your sense of personal worth as what you perceive to be of yourself. Does that make sense? So what can you do about this? You should just know you are not your grades. Your grades are not you, okay? You have to separate yourself from that. And I talked about this a little bit when I talked about feedback. Was that yesterday? It was very recent, it might've been yesterday where we talked about taking your personal feelings out of getting feedback, you kind of have to do it this with exams as well. An exam is another type of feedback, right? Getting that grade is a type of feedback. All right, another reason is maybe you have a fear of disappointing others. You worked really, really hard to get to this point and the expectations are really, really high amongst your, your peer group, your family, you know, all of those people, your spouse, your kids, whoever, and you are probably banking everything on getting through school, getting your license, getting a great career, and you might feel like people are counting on you. If nothing else, they've been cheering you on, supporting you, and it could be really hard to think that you could be letting 
some of these people down. Okay, first of all, they're not gonna be disappointed in you. They 100% know how hard you are working. But if you don't perform as well as you would like on a specific exam, it does not mean your career's over, okay? A lot of, even if you fail a class, even if you fail out of nursing school, guess what? It's not over. Many nurses take what I call the scenic route to get to where they're going. And sometimes scenic route is great, okay? I had a student once who failed first semester, I think. I think it was early on, it was first semester. And her attitude, like she failed first semester and then she was coming back to it. And I think she was going to go through boot camp to try to, you know, get herself ready for that second attempt. And her mindset about it was so great. She was like, you know what? I wasn't ready. I, yes, I did not succeed, but you know what? Taking this class again, it's just gonna make me a better nurse overall. So taking that scenic route, sometimes not the worst thing that could happen. And then the other thing is the fear of the unknown. So not understanding what the test is like can cause a lot of test anxiety. And you probably are hearing a lot of things from other students about how hard the tests are. So it can feel a lot like you're walking into this unknown territory, right? So you may not understand the, the format of the test. Is it multiple choice? Is it select all that apply? Is it essay? Is it short answer? How is the test formatted? That's a perfectly reasonable question to ask of your instructor prior to the exam, okay? What is the format of the exam? And for the most part, nursing school exams are going to be written in a way that kind of mimic the NCLEX to get you prepared and get you practicing. And then as far as not understanding maybe or not knowing what's going to be on the test, what content the test is covering, when you're going back through your lessons for that, everything that's coming up to this exam, look at the objectives for your lessons. A good instructor is going to write lesson objectives for each lecture, each online module, whatever it is. And if you can speak to those objectives, you're prepared for the exam because their exam should line up perfectly with their learning objectives, okay? So that would be one way how I tell students to kind of make your own study guide is go and look at those lesson objectives. And then the last reason, is this the last one? Yes, okay, so the last reason that you might have just higher test anxiety is because the exams are timed. and. When you think about this, think about maybe an exam you took in chemistry class. Did you have all day to take it? No, you had to finish it in the time period of the class. So you're, you've already done timed exams, but I understand that nursing school exams are kind of hyper-timed. They're not gonna give you as much time. They're probably not gonna give you three hours to take an exam. It'll be a shorter time period. Usually it's about a minute to a minute and a half to two minutes per question. So they are like timed, like you gotta stay on it. And so that can be a little bit anxiety provoking for students. So what I would do with this is, there's usually a little timer in the corner. If you can hide that timer, if your computer testing, whatever you're using, gives you the option to hide the timer and the timer makes you anxious, hide the timer. Okay, if you're worried about running out of time, you can make a deal with yourself that on every 10th question, you're gonna check the wall clock and just to make sure you're, you're kind of staying on track, but you don't have that timer clicking down, which can be just horrifying. Then you're just staring at the timer and thinking about how you're gonna run out of time, right? So that is one tip, if you can shut off the timer. And then you have to know how the test is structured to know whether you should waste or spend, I don't wanna say waste time, spend time on a question that you're struggling with or move on. So here's what I have to say to this. Ask the instructor ahead of time if you are able to go back to previous questions once you've gone through the test. Some tests are set up that you cannot do that, kind of like the NCLEX, you can't go back, right? You just can go forward. If your test is set up where you cannot go back to prior questions, then if you're struggling on a, on a question, my best advice is do your very best guess and move on, but don't waste five, 10 minutes on one question because then you'll run out of time for the exam. But if your exam allows you to go back and revisit questions and you get to a question and you're struggling, here's what you do. You can, you can make a choice in that moment to do your best, your best guess and move on 
if you do that, mark down the right on your scratch paper or whatever you have, your whiteboard, whatever it is, mark down what question number that was. And then when you get to the end of the test, hopefully you have time, then come back and look at it again with fresh eyes. Don't leave it blank just in case you run out of time. Okay, do your very best guess, but come back to it later. Often, I would suggest this though, a lot of times changing your answer is actually a change for the worse. I think that anecdotally, I've heard that many, many times, like your your first instinct is usually the very best one. So um, the only time I would change an answer is sometimes something in another question will spark you to remember the actual right information for a previous question. That is probably the only time I would ever go back and change. But do your very best guess, move on, come back and look at it if you have time. Okay, so a few tips, general tips for test anxiety. Uh, let's see, identify and replace negative self-talk. If you find yourself saying things like, oh, I don't know this, or I am guessing every single question, or I'm gonna fail this exam, you are ramping up your anxiety with this negative self-talk. So if you're in an exam and you notice those things, replace that with a more positive, self-affirming phrase such as, I prepared well, I'm doing my best. I prepared well, I'm doing my best, something like that. And then I also suggest that you just take a moment to get really centered before your exam starts. Sit down, take some deep breaths in, and out, count in for six, out for six, do that three or four times. It does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it because you will be much more calm and centered. And with that, I would say avoid that pre-test freakout zone is what I call it. When you go to the exam room and your classmates are all sitting out in the hallway and they're freaking out and talking and what do you think is going to be on it? Do you think she's going to ask about this? And they're going through their flashcards and they're trying to cram in a last little last little bit of knowledge. That is a really stressful environment. So instead of going to the freak out zone, go to your own zone, go somewhere where you can have a little bit of quiet, a little bit of calm, you know, even if it's just around the corner, you can listen to calming music. You can do a, I have this app, I forget what it's called, but it's like brain exercises. You could do something like that to kind of get your brain, like warm up, warm up your brain. You could just sit quietly and repeat your mantra, I've prepared well and I'm going to do my best. Look at pictures of your dog, whatever it is. So avoiding the pre-test freak out and then just releasing physical tension from your body, just tensing muscles and then releasing them really makes a big difference to kind of get that pent up energy out of your body. Okay, so that are those are my tips for nursing school test anxiety and, and really good reasons why you could have some so you don't feel like you're the only one and that it's unjustified. It's totally justified. The trick is to not let it be too much where you can't process, but let it be just the right amount so that you're hyper aware, hyper vigilant, hyper careful and do your absolute best. Okay. All right, so tomorrow, let's see what we're talking about. We're talking about being an older student in nursing school tomorrow. So I will see you back here for that tomorrow. And Anne says she watches something funny right before the exam. Okay, that's great. And yeah, laughter is great stress reliever, absolutely. Okay, so I'll see you all tomorrow, bye.